turn it off. Talk to you all about a serious injustice in this world, and that is the sexism that comes from men and is forced onto women. Women are raped and murdered, and for this, we need to kill all men. I am sick of being a baby factory that produces more men that will just, in the future, subjugate me. So the only answer to that is to kill male babies and um, just kill any man that you see, like in the streets, like any swing chick, just kill him because um, we want the species to go on, but we want it only to go on with women in it. So that's what we have to do. That's the only way to keep the human race going is with just women. Get it? All you had to do was open up the video and actually watch what I'm talking about to tell that I don't actually advocate for killing men. But those men that are commenting on my video are complete retards and honestly we could do without you on this planet so hashtag kill all men that are total retard I just got out of therapy and I realized bitch I'm the problem <laughs> Damn, I thought it was everybody else. I didn't think it was me. You're not insulting them. You're describing them. You're not speaking negatively of them. You're just explaining what happened. And you're not ruining their reputation. They did that with their actions. All right, you want to know why I don't get offended when men call women crazy? Because we fucking are. Because we fucking are. I just spent the last 30 minutes riding around following this lady because she decided that she was going to cut me off in traffic and then she was going to flip me off. She was going to cut me off and then she was going to flip me off. <laughs> okay. All right, sis. Well, your destination just become my destination. I'm going wherever you're going. So as I'm riding around following this lady and she keeps flipping me off, I'm like, what am I really going to do? I am 40 years old. I am five foot tall and 105 pounds. The only thing I'm going to do, because I ain't fighting, okay, these bones aren't getting broken. The only thing I'm going to do is uh, we're going to have a talk with Mr. Glock, okay? Mr. Glock. Um, but do I want to end up on an episode of Snapped? Am I ready? At 40 years old, is that what I'm ready for? I do look good in the color orange. They do serve free meals. I don't know. I don't know. We're, we're, we're fucking crazy, okay? I broke my new iPhone. That's not an iPhone. You sped by, you startled me, I dropped it, and now you owe me a no, new I'm iPhone. No, I'm not getting you a new one. Ow! What are you doing? You pushed me over. No, I haven't moved, and I have you on camera. Ah! Somebody gotta say it, and I'll be the bitch to say it. Ladies, a lot of times, y'all be the motherfucking problem. Yeah, bitch, I say y'all, you, bitch, you, not motherfucking me, because I know how to act, bitch. First of all, y'all bitches lie more than the niggas. Yes, you do, bitch. You're lying about where you're going, where you've been, who your friends is, how you're cleaning your coochie, who you're talking to, who you've been texting. Bitch, you even lying about the GPA you had in fifth grade, bitch. Y'all lie to get the man, try to change him into what you want him to be, and then when the shit backfire and blow up in your motherfucking face, then bitch, you sitting there bad. Ain't had no respect for yourself when the whole relationship started. You lied to him, acting like you had some respect for yourself. Then when he try to respect you, you don't know how to motherfucking accept it, cause bitch, you don't got no respect for yourself. You be using the same douche bottle over and over again when you're not supposed to be using them at all, bitch. You be wearing the same bra talking about you got two of them. That's a lie too, bitch. Y'all bitches be the pro- Y'all don't know the truth to say y'all motherfucking life, but don't shoot the messenger. Today's article proves what we've been saying for years in the manosphere. It's published on a neuroscience.com website, not on some half-baked bro science site. So our detractors can't claim it's made up. The delusional feminists can't project like they always do and claim we're imagining this. The title of the study is called, Prevalence of Female Psychopaths, More Common Than Believed. Did they really need a study for this? You can easily come to the same conclusion watching TikTok videos of women. Nothing's going on in my life. I don't have any drama. Should I make some drama? <laughs> the gynocentric dictatorship in the West incubates these women and rewards the worst traits because there's no punishment for lying and, matter of fact, they'll reward by stealing the men's assets. 
Girls growing up are told in school they're the best gender out there and they have a right to screw men over because of 1,000 years of oppression women had before feminism saved them from the kitchen, just to have them slave away for a corporation. Also, women lie to each other all the time. How many times have you seen a group of hyenas called a fat girl beautiful? They do it all the time. Summary, researchers provide novel insights into female psychopathy, challenging the conventional 6 to 1 male to female psychopath ratio with new evidence suggesting a closer 1.2 to 1 ratio. Like I said, today's women, especially with social media, are encouraged to do crazy things. You see the comments like Yas Queen, You Go Girl, Slay, You A Baddie, We Run This World, or YOLO, which is an acronym for You Only Live Once. You even have girls trying to take selfies on cliffs and falling to their deaths, all for that. Mama! No, you're a hater! You're mad I'm rich! You're mad I'm pretty! You're mad your nigga wanna fuck me! You're mad! Most of the time, when you see women with a phone, they act like adult children. They don't get what they want, they cry about it on social media, or throw a tantrum in front of the world. And there's no consequences like I said. A fight almost broke out in Walmart today. No father to set an example and disown the 304 daughter because he was out of her life since the day she was born. It's been proven women have lied in court under oath ruining a man's life with a false accusation, and she doesn't even spend one day in jail because they treat her like the victim. Back to the study. The 1.2 to 1 ratio means that the guys are a little more psychopathic, but that's because there are certain traits associated with psychopathy that males have, that makes males more successful. Being self-absorbed, for instance, has driven males to improve themselves to the point they can be self-absorbed. They work out till they're built like a marble statue, or they figure out a way to make six figures online, which means learning hard skills that no one else can or wants to learn. Or let's put it this way. Someone has to charge the machine gun nest in a time of war. That's when you pray for a crazy mofo who in his head thinks he can survive being shot by a 50 caliber machine gun, or he doesn't care if he dies, or he's addicted to the life-threatening adrenaline rush. But that's what testosterone does to men, makes them more aggressive and less risk adverse. The research indicates that societal gender biases have obscured the true nature and prevalence of female psychopaths, who often employ manipulation and seduction rather than violence to achieve their goals. The revelation not only calls for a reassessment of psychopathy across genders, but also signals significant implications for criminal justice and corporate leadership. Gender bias is an understatement. Until the MGTOW movement society has, by default, treated and claimed all women told the truth and were virtuous, they could do no wrong. I ain't never seen a man that I fucking need, bitch. You're all replaceable, don't ever get too comfortable, and don't ever think otherwise. You're a guest in this household, and you can be kicked out just as quickly as you were welcomed in. I just get so confused when I see these ladies that are using filters, a ton of makeup, drawn on eyebrows, fake eyelashes, and where you can still see the glue at the top of their head for hair that is not theirs. So confidently come on the screen and talk shit about men. How dare you? Key facts. One, new ratio uncovered. Dr. Body's research suggests the real ratio of male to female psychopathy could be as low as 1.2 to 1 indicating female psychopaths are up to five times more common than previously thought. 2. Gender bias in identification. Traditional psychopathy measures, designed around male criminal behavior, fail to capture the more manipulative and seductive tactics employed by female psychopaths. Let's stop at number 2. How many times have we seen women fake a relationship enough to fool the guy they're dating to get the relationship benefits for free? Or they're cheating and lie straight to the man's face without blinking? That's why women cheat more than men, because they get caught less. I could not resist, so I had to look it up. From the Office of National Statistics, from a 2019 study, in ever-increasing numbers, we are now at a lesbian divorce rate of 72%. So the top four reasons that they are reporting getting divorced is feeling ignored, inequality in the partnership, adultery, and domestic violence. Personally, I feel like this lends some weight to men's arguments and complaints about how women are behaving in relationships.
Because when you have lesbian statistic, lesbian divorce statistics that look like that, the girls are kind of telling on themselves. Three, implications for society and business. The underestimation of female psychopaths has serious repercussions for the criminal justice system and organizational leadership decisions, highlighting a need for gender-inclusive assessment methods. To sum number three up, there are a lot of crimes being underreported or even caught because women are the ones doing the crimes. 30% of women who get DNA tests commit paternity fraud. That's fooling the man to raise someone else's kid. And how many times have you seen a woman get a promotion because she's sleeping with the boss or she flirts enough to make the boss think she likes him to get the bonus or raise? Most women in the West engage in some type of pay-to-play scheme with relationships. I have been married for 51 years. Got two sons, 42 and 40. Them deadbeats. I'm still supporting the little boogers. Needed to take a test to see if any of us had a kidney good enough for my brother. Found out something interesting. They ain't my kids. There's somebody else's. <laughs> of course, the only good thing is, I know it's not my fault that those two idiots got dumped into this world. Hell, I thought they took after their mother. Instead, they take after the plumber or the postman or the milkman. Or Yeah, they were milkmen back when they came around. I mean, God only knows. <laughs> it sure gets old. I do wish I knew who the real fathers were. And they ain't the same. She was bopping a couple of different guys. But if I could figure out who they were, I've been practicing law, law long enough that I pretty well figure I could sue their ass and get all my money back that I sunk into those two dead meat. It just chaps my ass that she couldn't tell me. I'd probably forgiven her. Maybe not. You know how it is. Hell, yeah, boys, y'all need to go get your own paternity test. You can't tell how, by looking who's the daddy unless you're looking down at the genetic level. I've been in court thousands of times in paternity suits. At four out of five times, guy says he ain't the daddy, he's right. And the genetic test are the only way to prove it for sure. These women are hopping everything that looks fun. You thought you liked sex. <laughs> you ain't nothing. Well, I, I guess that pretty well completes that story. I'll go home, start drafting up some divorce papers, see if I can't get free of that crazy bitch. I mean, I stayed with her for the sake of the children and the grandchildren, now the great-grandchildren. But they ain't no kin of mine. Fuck them. Source, Anglia Ruskin University. To be honest, I've never heard of this university. I think it's in the UK. I'm going to skip some parts that repeat the info. During his talk at ARU's Cambridge campus on Saturday, the 16th of March, Dr. Body will argue that the characteristics of female psychopaths differ from males and that gender bias plays a role in the underreporting, with society ignoring what people perceive to be male traits when they are displayed by women. Lying is lying. People just make excuses for women when they do it. So it's really not that independent women can't find a man. Our challenge is finding a man who's more of a man than we are. Referencing research into corporate psychopaths and how they operate in high-achieving roles in the workplace. 
Dr. Body will explain how female psychopaths are more manipulative than males, use different techniques to create a good impression, and utilize deceit and sexually seductive behavior to gain social and financial advantage more than male psychopaths do. Like I said, in every organization that has men and women, women sleep their way to the top. And if women can't outright sleep or flirt their way to the top, they'll blackmail a man with a sexual harassment allegation or some other false accusation. Or they'll just do it to get rid of another person on the corporate ladder in their way. Dr. Body, deputy head of the School of Management in Anglia Ruskin University, said, People generally attribute psychopathic characteristics to males rather than to females. So even when females display some of the key traits associated with psychopathy, such as being insincere, deceitful, antagonistic, unempathetic, and lacking in emotional depth, because these are seen as male characteristics they may not be labeled as such, even when they should be. Red-pilled men have never considered psychopathy as quote-unquote just a male characteristic. We've been saying this from day one, that most of these modern women are batshit crazy, cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Also, female psychopaths tend to use words, rather than violence, to achieve their aims, differing from how male psychopaths tend to operate. If female psychopathy expresses differently, then measures designed to capture and identify male, criminal, psychopaths may be inadequate at identifying female, non-criminal psychopaths. I still call BS. I think women aren't tested enough. Go test these chicks on social media. They'll score high on the tests that were so-called made for men. It's much easier today with the gynocentric dictatorship to mutilate kids, all in the name of LGBTQ tard. Matter of fact, Feminist states like California will help these deranged people out to butcher their own kids. Having your son's d cut off is a lot worse than jail. Senate Bill 107, it requires California courts ignore all state law from the foreign state. They will not return children with gender dysphoria. That's why she wants to get my son to California. You'd think Texas would be fighting this. I sent this to the Texas Attorney General. I sent this to the Texas Governor. Have you heard anything about it? Not a word. That's because Texas wants me the hell out of there. This ain't the state of the Alamo anymore. Texas wants me gone because I cost the governor of Texas 100,000, 200,000 votes. He's very nervous, right? And I'm telling people what he did, nothing. He did nothing for my son. He has the power to direct the agencies. He did nothing for my son. They want me gone. And if this case gets transferred to California, they can say, you know what? It's not my problem. It's a California case. Why are we talking about that in a Texas election? California courts, without the parents' consent, they can sterilize that child and cut their dick off. The Texas father has spent over $1 million in court fees trying to stop his crazy ex to turn his own son into a girl. That's why she kidnapped the kid to California, so she can remove all the male parts with the protection of the state. It's extremely sad, and the so-called conservative Texas state is helping out by doing nothing to protect the kid. They're complicit in the psychopath's revenge against her ex. The campaign is called Save James for those of you who want to help out. 50 years ago, someone would face the death penalty for child mutilation. Now it's celebrated by these feminist societies. That's how I know there are more crazy psychopathic women than men. Skipping some of this, it just repeats. This has implications for the criminal justice system because current risk management decisions involving partners and children may be faulty. It also has implications for organizational leadership selection decisions because female leaders cannot automatically be assumed to be more honest, caring, and concerned with issues such as corporate social responsibility. We, the men in the workforce who actually have to work for a living and not pontificate in an ivy tower, could have told you that years ago. Most women admit that they would rather work for a male boss than a female boss, if given the choice because 99% of the women bosses never earned their leadership position and has given it through diversity mandates. We've all seen the stereotype of the overbearing queen bee boss who makes everyone else's life miserable. It may seem like a tired trope, but some women do feel that female bosses bully them more than their male ones do. Studies show that when women have a preference, they would choose to have a male boss instead of a female one. One paper even found that the longer a woman was in the workforce, the less likely she was to want a woman as her boss. So where does this feeling come from? Dr. Clive Body has been researching the effects of having psychopaths in the workplace since 2005, and has published more on corporate psychopaths than any other academic. His research interests include toxic leadership and particularly the effects of corporate psychopaths on employees, organizations, and society. Today's corporations are the worst places to work in. They're soul-sucking and oppressive. You say something wrong, especially to a Karen, and you can get fired instantly. 
there's a ton of ass kissing and nepotism. It's a miracle that many of these companies aren't out of business already. Finally, gents, we have proof that women are crazier than men. MGTOW has been vindicated. If you want to see what a crazy person is capable of, or what a real psychopath is, here's a real story of a real-life woman psychopath. A woman obsessed with true crime allegedly killed someone just to see what it was like. South Korean police say that 23-year-old Chung Yoo Chung consumed tons of crime shows and read books about murder before fatally stabbing a stranger. Police believe that she was actively researching and reading about murder so that she could get away with it. Obviously, that didn't work. Three months prior to the murder, she was looking up tips on how to hide a corpse. Police described her as a loner and a recluse who had been unemployed since graduating high school five years ago. This woman apparently downloaded an app that's used to find tutors for your children. That's where she connected with the unidentified victim. Two days later, she told the tutor she was going to send her daughter for a consultation. Instead, Chung showed up wearing a school uniform she'd purchased online. Police also said that with this uniform on, she's so short that the tutor probably believed that she was a ninth grader. After being led into the home, she allegedly fatally stabbed this tutor with a knife. Police say she then dismembered this woman and cleaned up using bleach and garbage bags purchased from a nearby store. She then placed the remains in a suitcase and took a taxi to a nearby wooded area. She dumped the suitcase in some brush but kept the victim's ID, wallet, and phone. And this was apparently to make it seem like no foul play was involved. But the taxi driver thought it was suspicious that someone was taking a suitcase into the woods and dumping it. So they reported her to police. And when police searched her home, they found more of the victim's remains. She initially told police that she killed the tutor after an argument, but there was holes in her story and her family pushed her to confess. A spokesperson said that she feels sorry for what she did and they're conducting tests to see if she's a psychopath. And when she was asked why she tried to conceal the murder, she said, I think I was out of my mind. As always, I wish you tremendous success. Now it's your turn. What do you think? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Remember that if you leave the best comment, you'll get five bucks. Thank you so much for watching. If you found value in this video, hit the like and subscribe buttons, ring the notification bell so you don't miss out on future uploads, drop a comment, and share it. See you in the next video. Till next time.